Hi, I'm Swizzets and this is Shoutem's React Native School. Today we're going to build a tiny React Native app that shows you the cutest pictures on the internet with AI generated captions. When you click on the right, it goes to the next picture and when you click on the left, it goes to the previous picture. It's going to take just about 46 lines of code and it's going to be pretty fun. You'll see. To create a new React Native app, I'm going to assume you already have the React Native CLI installed. You would have done it like this. React npm install minus g React Native CLI. And it should say that I already have it, but apparently it's installing it again. And then you do React Native init, just a tribute app or name it whatever you want. And this downloads a bunch of NPM packages, installs them, and it's going to create um, files necessary for Xcode and iOS integration and Android integration and all of that. You're going to need either Xcode for iOS, for an iOS simulator or an Android simulator. And I already have all of them installed, but they're pretty easy to get. So we wait for this to finish. Okay, great. The thing installed and now we have to go into the actual directory cd just attribute app maybe i can make this even bigger so it's even easier to see for you and then what you do is you do react native run ios in my case you can do run android if you're if you're not on mac or if you just prefer to do android you wait for a bit for everything to run it's gonna compile your app uh, run a React Native, a React server in the background that the, that handles React stuff. And as you can see, the iOS, the iOS simulator is now running. We're still waiting for the app to finish compiling. It's, and uh, now it, this is the React server that's running in the background. It's the same as when you're doing it on the web. It runs a simple NPM server. I don't know what it runs. It's uh, probably using Webpack or something similar to do uh, bundling of all of your dependencies. And when all of this is finished, we're going to see a Hello World app that comes default with our uh, React Native CLI. So we wait a little bit longer. Great, after a short wait, we have the simulator running. There's a server in the background and I can prove that it's a server by going to localhost 8081. And you can see that it says React Native, pack, Native Packager is running and we can ex see stuff here. Um, and then when we go back to the, what's it called? The simulator, if you do command D, you open the uh, debugging the development uh, menu you have debug js remotely which is really useful because it opens a remote debugger into your application so you can use the same tools you're used to on the web and another good one another useful one is live reloading which i like to keep enabled and hot reloading is not as useful um, the difference is that with live reloading, every time you change a file, your app reloads. And with hot reloading, it tries to insert new code into the existing running code, which sometimes leads to discrepancies between what you coded and what's actually there. And another useful one is the, sh is the inspector, where if you click on something, you get the same sort of output you're used to in Chrome. Okay. So now we can start actually writing some code and changing this, um, uh, not the performance monitor. We can change this, um, what's it called? The simulate, blah. We can change the default app and make our own clicker for cutest pictures in the world. Okay, with the debugging basics out of the way, we can start writing our code. We open just attribute app index.ios.js and the reason we're going to do everything in iOS is because I'm running an iOS simulator. At the top, we have a couple of imports. Then we have the main app code. And at the bottom, we have style sheets. Now, because we're doing React Native, we can't use CSS like we would on the web. So we have to do everything with this stylesheet.create syntax that then uses 
stuff that looks very similar to normal CSS. Now to spare you from, watch from watching me code from scratch, I'm gonna use this handy repository I prepared earlier. You can find it at github.com slash swizzet slash just attribute app and I suggest following it, following it while you read the article below this video down there. Uh, the commits roughly follow how the article flows so it's easy for you to get oriented and see the diffs between different steps and exactly what we're adding and what we're doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you more like a quick overview of how we put this together and how it then works and you should read the article to get the details and more in-depth explanation of how everything fits together. We're going to start first with copy pasting the list of images from my pre-prepared repository and then going from there. The reason I use this instead of trying to fetch them is because this is easier to explain. And I know I promised AI generated captions at the beginning. Well, we have them pre-generated and I used some Microsoft AI that I found by Googling, uh, what did I Google again? It was something like caption images and then I just copy pasted images in, got the captions and wrote them down. Excellent. The next step is to get the CSS or the style sheet. And once again, I'm just going to copy paste it because I am extremely lazy and you don't want to see me typing all of this anyway. Delete command yank. And now I'm going to show you the simulator where you see that it reloads and immediately starts looking different. We lost all of the styling for the text and the background is a lot more blue than it was before. Now that we have the styling and the list of images, we can start writing some actual code. I'm first going to indent this and then I'm going to remove everything at the bottom or everything inside the container. And you'll see the app update to be empty. And I'm going to write down the default state, which is index zero and the image width is null. The image width is Im comes in later and it's mostly because we're going to need it to know how wide we're rendering our app so that we can decide whether it's being, we're clicking the image or tapping the image on the left or on the right. Now, once we have the default state, we're going to get an image, which is going to be a constant and it's going to be image dos, this dot state dot index. Pretty easy. We render it by using an image, uh, what's it called? An image component, which we're going to have to import. You'll see this is going to show throw an error and we use this we use the source attribute which is similar to source in uh, in HTML or in normal react and style is going to be styles.image and then on layout is going to be something I will show you in just a bit first I want you to see the error image is not defined so we go so we go to the top and we add image to imports and I'm also going to add touchable highlight because we're going to use it later to make the image clickable. And now here we should see the first image show up. As you can see it stretches over the entire screen almost completely uh, almost uh, fills the entire screen horizontally and the reason it fills the entire screen vertically is because of w how we're using Flexbox. And that's the interesting thing. In React Native, you always have to use Flexbox for layouting. I don't actually know why, but it's supposed to be very useful. So we have some helpful styles for style empty. Uh, and that's going to make our image centered. Styles empty. This should now center our image exactly so the way it works is that the empty view has a flex of one and then the image has a flex of two which means that top and bottom take up one unit and the center takes up two units which makes the cent which forces flexbox to center our image and also gives it a proportionally bigger size if we change this to three it's going to be taller yes see it's a bit taller so let's, let's put it back to two because that's what I had before. Now that we have the image, the next step is to detect how wide it is. The reason we want to detect that instead of looking just at the 
320 width here is because ideally we would want this width to adapt to the screen size. So if I rotate this, you'll see that the image is still 320, which is not the best. Um, it's not the best UX when you're on mobile and you expect to be able to rotate your app. Um, okay, so the way we do that is we use an on layout um, lifecycle callback and we give it a callback that we have to bind to this class and on image layout what we do is we get the event and we're just going to update the state of image width in our component this set state and image width becomes event native event layout dot width so the react event for react native event for on layout happens when our image is getting layouted into the app and that's when we can detect how wide it is and i'm not exactly sure why it's why it works that way but i'm sure that there's a particular reason and that it has something to do with the fact that our renderer is using actual native components for for our platform now throughout this course i'm gonna say i'm not sure or i don't know a lot and that's mostly because first of all you don't actually need to know all the details to be able to use react native usefully and to build cool apps and it's because i'm a web developer i'm not actually a native developer or a mobile developer and the whole point of that is to prove that you can build cool apps even though you're just a web developer well just is a strong word but even though you're a web developer you can build cool apps using react native now the way you make things clickable in react native is with something called touchable highlight the reason you have to do to do that is because uh blah oh i can't i can't type and talk at the same time the reason you have to use touchable highlight is because you can't use on click or on tap events directly on your components mostly because there needs to be to be some visual feedback to the user that you've actually clicked and that's what touchable highlight gives you it takes an on press callback that we're gonna use uh, this next image for and it also needs a style um, we're gonna give it the same styles as we used for the image uh, my syntax highlighter is acting up okay we indent that and then close touchable highlight now what we need is the next image callback which is going to take an event you see it's complaining that we don't have uh, the next image function and we're going to take index and image width from state and we're also gonna look at the x coordinate of where we tapped or clicked we take native event location x and the delta is the di is basically the delta for our index whether it goes up or it goes down and we decide that by looking at whether x is smaller or greater than image width divided by two which in theory should be left or right of the center okay new index becomes index plus delta and then to make sure that we stay inside the le the length of our image array we do a modulus which with images dot length and then if just in case it becomes smaller than zero because modulus does modulus maintains um the sign of an integer so if it's smaller than zero, we know that we have to loop around and go back to the uh, to the last image. So then new index becomes images dot length minus math absolute of new index. In theory, this should always be one, but just to make sure that everything is safe and secure, we go with the more safe approach of doing math abs and stuff like that. And once we have the new index, we just update state and once we update state react native is going to re-render re our component and it that's going to create uh, the image changing effect so now when we click on the right see it changes the image and when we click on the left 
it changes the image again. Perfect. One thing we still have to do is make sure that the captions actually show up. And the easiest way to do that is to add them as a text to our touchable highlight uh, wrapper. And for the style, we use styles.imageLabel. And then we do image label for the actual caption. And man, my highlighter keeps acting up. Now here we should see a caption show up under the image. What? Oh, it's supposed to have a single child. Ah, so we actually put it inside the image contain, inside the image itself, which is kind of interesting. It's not something you can do on the web. Now we have cat on a blue blanket and a cat toy, a close up of a dog and so on. And there you go. That's your first React Native app, or at least that was my first React Native app. It was a lot of fun to build and I hope you had fun following along. In the future, especially if you've been doing React Native for a while, in the future you'll find a lot more interesting stuff on this channel. We're going to be building various different apps. Each lecture is going to be structured roughly as a small interesting app where we exercise a, s a specific part of React Native. And that's it. Subscribe, follow along, and make sure you share this with your friends. They're going to love it.